Is cutting down trees always bad and contribute to the global warming? And in that case, why did Tesla cut down a lot of trees making place for their gigafactory in Germany? Also, stay tuned, I have something very important about our population on Earth to say in the end of this episode. The forest, with trees, plants and the biodiversity. The nature that is now breathing through the photosynthesis using sunlight, water and sucking carbon from the air. The trees are growing and forming fibers to this fantastic material that we as a human call wood. The leaves are sucking the carbon dioxide from the air, bringing the carbon atoms into the branches and the trunk. The carbon is caught in the tree's fiber for many years, but eventually the tree gets old and dies. And what happens then? Most of the carbon that the tree absorbs during its lifetime will be released into the atmosphere again when the material is decomposed. But new plants that is growing will absorb this carbon dioxide and everything will be in a balance. Well, that's until human came around anyway and started to release and pump out carbon dioxide from a time era far before a person took its first step on Earth. I made an episode not so long time ago about the carbon dioxide that we now release into the atmosphere by burning oil, gas and coal and how long time this carbon has been kept there underground. We as a human have probably difficult to imagine these time scales and how long time this actually is and then maybe by seeing my uh, episode you could a little bit understand how the situation is with this carbon that we now release into the atmosphere and what consequences it gets so go and watch that movie i will put a link in the end of this episode and also i'll link to it up here can the forest be the key for solving our problems with rising levels of carbon dioxide? Maybe it can. But can we still continue to cut the forest down then? There is no straight answer to this. As with many other things in our world, it depends. Most of the time, a forest that is not cultivated will just absorb a little bit more carbon dioxide than it releases. The amount of dead wood will release a similar amount of carbon dioxide that younger plants absorb. Only a few percent of the carbon will stay in the ground, and that's in a normal situation okay. But now we are in a situation where we have a huge unbalance of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. So, what to do then? Researchers says that a growing forest is absorbing more carbon dioxide than a forest that has reached its natural lifespan. So, cutting down a fully grown forest using its material for construction, building houses and so on, may not be so bad idea. Because then the carbon is caught in the timber for many more years to come. So when Tesla took down the forest making place for its gigafactory in Germany, the criticism that came was maybe not accurate, since the trees was fully grown and Tesla will replant and reforest a larger area than the size needed for their gigafactory. And there is huge areas around the world that has been deforested during the last 200 years that is suitable to replant and bring up the forests again. Because that 
could very well be a key factor in order to reduce the carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere, to bind the carbon into wood again. In Tesla's case, they took all the possible action to reduce their environment impact when they were creating land for their new factory. A factory that will build electric cars, cars that will not emit poisonous fumes from a tailpipe. Burning wood, it releases carbon dioxide into the air, the same amount that the tree took up during all its lifetime. Therefore, I believe that uh, biofuel is something that maybe is only a short-term solution in, in order to replace uh, maybe coal, oil or gas for heat pro and energy production. My belief that the research in the battery technology now is so large all over the world that we in maybe five to ten years will see a storage capacity that is huge to a very compelling price. So in that way we can uh, harvest as much wind and solar as we like, build huge areas and store the energy for times in these huge storage battery systems when the sun is not shining or the wind is not blowing. Therefore we will have a lot of energy in form of electricity and then it's good, great that we have those future-proved electric cars around us. So the critics now say that farming the forest on the scale that we need to solve the carbon dioxide crisis will limit the biodiversity that also is important for our survival. Yes, and that's true in some way. So when harvesting the forest we need to do it carefully and we have to leave areas in the nature that can be a reserve. Also, our world is huge, so something that works in Germany may not be working in the rainforest around the equator. Here, the species are much more sensitive to huge disturbance, because they have adapted to a climate and a temperature that is more stable during the year than near our poles of the globe. But let me be clear. I'm against all overuse of our nature resources, but we have to use them smart, carefully and to the best knowledge that we have in this crisis situation that we are in right now. Some have the opinion that the conclusion to all humanity's problem and the crisis situation is because we are too many people on earth. Yeah, well, that is maybe true, and it's not so difficult to come up with this statement. Just look to the statistics. Yeah, we are a lot of people on Earth, and the growth of human population during the last 200 years has been huge, astronomically huge. But now we are in this situation, and saying that we are too many people on Earth, what does it help? Is this a solution for going forward? And it's also difficult to say that we are too many people on Earth because is the solution coming with that we have to reduce the population? And who will be deciding who will be living and who will not? Humans are quite good of killing each other already. This is a very difficult question and it's also quite unfair. Because the small minority that is living in the rich world, we are the one that has been polluting and exploiting our earth so hardly, because our lifestyle. But it's also not possible to tell the people in the so-called rich world to abandon their way of living and start a primitive life. And if you are criticizing someone that is trying to do something for the environment, for example, building a factory that will produce electric cars using fossil fuel in the machines that will be used to make the factory. Then you better come up with a, another better solution yourself. Because the solution is not to blame each other.
Remember that the person that was inventing the light bulb, he was using kerosene light and candles in order to see in the dark to experiment with his new invention. Well, that's it for this episode. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, I would be really grateful. And as always, if you're planning to buy a Tesla Model 3 S or X, you're very welcome to use my refer link and um, that will give you some free supercharging. And as always, until next time, uh, try to stay healthy and have a great life.